past Trek references to the Dominion War, races we haven't seen since very early Next Generation. Giant cloaked killer bees, Trill Jantara rituals, references to a Star Trek race that's been mentioned quite a few times before but never seen, apart from in Star Trek Online. All of that coming up in this week's review. I'm Nick and welcome back everyone to Science Fanatics. Episode 3 of Star Trek Discovery Season 5, entitled Janal, we return to Trill, where we got a bit of body swapping thing going on between Dr. Culber and an ancient Trill host by the name of Janal. We've got Saru and Tarina back on Starfleet headquarters, undergoing Saru's first day on the job as ambassador. Meanwhile on Discovery, we've got Raina talking with Tilly and a lot of other crew members, and Raina finding out a little bit more about everybody in his first outing as the first officer of Discovery. There's a lot to unpack in this week's review and breakdown of the episode, so let's get right into it. Our episode begins back on Starfleet headquarters, where we're going through a little bit of a back history about Mole. Uh, they've obviously been able to dig into her previous record, work out a little bit more about where she grew up, what her priors are and all that sort of stuff, to try to learn more about uh, who they're up against this season. Pretty much Lark is a blank slate. Nobody knows anything about him, which kind of leads me to believe that Lark's identity is going to be the mystery box for this season. Normally in past seasons they kind of put the premise out there of a mystery box premise, and then they spend the whole season waiting to get to that mystery box to open it. Well in this case they've given us that box to open in the first episode with the whole progenitors uh, tech they're hunting down but they're still giving us a little bit of uh, mystery to uh, to unpack and that I reckon is going to be in the form of who exactly Lark is. We're off to Trill to track down the next piece of the progenitors puzzle and they work out that looking at the edge of the puzzle piece they've just got it perfectly matches up with facial spots of an old Trill host by the name of Janal. Now Janal died 800 years ago, back in uh, Next Generation kind of era, but the latest host of the Symbiont is willing to do a Jantara ritual with one of the crew members of Discovery in order to lead our crew towards the next puzzle piece. However, it's not going to be as easy as they think. Ron is on board now and has taken over the job of First Officer, and it appears he's been demoted. Obviously he was captain in the first episode, but he's been bumped down to Commander to serve as First Officer on the Discovery. He's got to do some crew evaluations whilst trying to unlock a little bit more information about Mole and Lark, but he's only got 30 seconds with which he's going to spend with each crew member. So he's got a few to get through and only a very short amount of time, whatever, whatever he deems is the absolute bare minimum he has to talk to these people. Burnham introduces Raina to the rest of the bridge crew and um, there seems to be a lot of new crew members. I mean, criticism I've always had of Discovery is we hardly know the bridge crew. We've never hardly known any of the bridge crew for most of the whole run of the entire series. Our crew members that we have been with for the last four seasons uh, some of them now have gone. So Nilsson's gone off to be on the Voyager. Bryce isn't with them anymore. Christopher's taken his job on Discovery. And we've got all these other crew members, uh, Mayer and, and, and Gallo and, and, and everyone who, 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 who we've never ever seen before. So we just seem to have a revolving door of nameless bridge crew members who we know nothing about on this show. We get a nice scene in engineering between Reno, Adira and Stamets. Even though Reno only had a very brief appearance in this episode, she always is a, a scene stealer. Uh, I love the line where she comes out with this very uh, inspirational phrase or something and then she says, don't I sound like a woo-woo asshole? <laughs> asshole. But they always do a good job at, at, at writing uh, uh, lines for Reno. She, she's a crack up. Before our crew can beam down to Trill though, they have to answer a uh, bit of a riddle, which was uh, where does the fourth point? That being the fourth line of the uh, the, the 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 poem that they uh, unlocked in the last location back at the Promillion um, Acropolis. Uh, the fourth line of the poem or whatever pointed to Beta Z before they had to kind of take that away and ended up ended up on Trill. So the answer being Beta Z, they found that piece of information and they get to beam down the Trill to meet uh, the current host of the uh, the big symbiont, which is Kalzara. Obviously, 800 years ago, it was Janal. And as I predicted, Culber is going to be the one to fill the shoes of Janal so he can point them in the right direction to uncover the next clue of the puzzle, if they are worthy. Meanwhile, back on Federation HQ, we've got Tarina and Saru. Saru's first day on the job. He's managing uh, the worlds that he's responsible for and everything. But they've also got to manage their uh, engagement announcement. And appears the... Uh, the purest Vulcans aren't going to be too happy about their engagement and they're trying to do a bit of uh, PR management in terms of how that announcement is going to go with uh, 
Vulcans who uh, don't necessarily want to see Vulcans marrying off to other species. There's some good scenes in this episode between Rainer and Tilly. Rainer is about as gruff and irritated as, as you can get and obviously Tilly is more of a bubbly personality, very friendly personality. So putting these two opposites ends of the extreme together in this episode I think worked really nicely where you've got Rainer just wanting to get down to the the job of tracking down Mole and Lark Whereas Tilly uh, is trying to, you know, make sure that the first officer gets to know the crew and, you know, gets to know everybody and everybody respects him and he respects them and it's all happy families. But Raina's uh, a little bit of a harder nut to crack. We get a little bit of a reunion between Adira and Grey and you kind of feel there's a bit of a weirdness going on here between these two. It's been kind of six months since they've seen each other and you can tell that things aren't how they used to be. They're, they're, they're a little bit tense, things are a little bit distant maybe between these two, and then we're probably going to see a shift uh, in the dynamics with their relationship. The Jantara ritual begins, so obviously we've seen the Jantara ritual a few times before in, in DS9, and also uh, earlier episodes of Discovery and so forth, so at least they're maintaining a little bit of uh, continuity there with this uh, Trill ritual. The ritual begins and Janal's consciousness is transferred into Dr. Kulber's body, but we get a bit of this kind of Freaky Friday thing going on, with uh, Culber now taking over a completely different personality uh, in the form of Janal, who has a bit more maybe swagger and a bit more of a sort of I guess a bit of a cowboy type he kind of seems to be almost you know a bit more in your face a bit more uh, extroverted perhaps which is interesting to see uh, you know how they're gonna uh, mesh with uh, Book and Burnham for this little uh, mission they have to go on. Next we're back at Federation headquarters where we see Saru's first time on the job. Interesting gathering of people here we've got in this uh, this meeting. Uh, we see uh, what I'm assuming is a Soleil. We haven't seen the Soleil way back since the first season of Next Generation, this sort of snake-headed race of people. They're talking about the Breen being a threat. This is the second time that they've dropped the Breen as a potential uh, threat here in this season. They mentioned them in the first episode and they've mentioned them again. Now you don't just suddenly name drop these races over and over again to try to cement them into the audience's memory unless it's potentially going to pay off somewhere down the line. So I'm guessing the fact that we've had a couple of mentions of the Breen now might be pointing to some some sort of involvement with them later in the season. Meanwhile, Saru is trying to manage this other Vulcan aid there about his concerns with the Vulcan purists and everything and how they're going to manage this announcement of their engagement without <laughs> pissing off half a Vulcan. Meanwhile, the, our uh, away mission with, uh, with Janal, Burnham and Book, uh, strolling through the canyons there on Trill, and we get a little bit of history about when the... Um, the, the, there was a scientific team, there was different members from the Federation uh, races that all uh, did a bit more of a deep dive into the progenitor's technology. Uh, this was all happening around the same time as the Dominion War. So interesting that they kind of, these group of scientists chose right the middle of the Dominion War as time to unearth all of this information from the progenitors. You'd think the Federation would have uh, a lot of other stuff on their plate around this time, but interesting that that is when Janal was from, that's when the, the, then they did all this research and everything on the progenitors. So that was kind of interesting that we got a, a more accurate um, anchoring of that uh, event taking place at that particular moment in uh, in Starfleet's history. Back up on Discovery, we get Rainer having his little 30 second uh, speed dating kind of meetings with uh, the different members of the Discovery crew. And even now where we get an opportunity to learn a bit more personal stuff about the bridge crew, we're whizzing past them all at a million mile an hour for 30 seconds. I thought, oh, okay, we might actually find some more character development about our bridge crew in this in this uh, episode. But no, we, we speed through them so quickly. But we do find out that uh, Reese is a big fan of the old Constitution class, uh, which I'm guessing is going to uh, maybe give him a little bit more to do perhaps when we get later in the season, because we know from the trailers and everything there is a Constitution class Enterprise coming up in a, in a future uh, episode based on some trailer shots so I'm guessing he's gonna have a bit of a field day in that episode. We get to find out that Dr. Pollard uh, had some uh, interesting encounters with the Binars, another old season one uh, Star Trek Next Generation race we haven't heard from for quite a while. We got the Binars for a bit on, on Lower Decks last season but we haven't seen them in live action since way back in season one of Next Gen along with the Soleil which I mentioned before so that was like an interesting little uh, easter egg. One of our other new crew members likes the game Tongo which referenced quite a few times on Deep Space Nine 
Nine. Linus talks a bit about the mating habits and offspring rituals and so forth of the Saurians. And we find out that Nilsson's gone off to work on the Voyager, uh, but has left a neutered Tribble on board, which we saw, I think it was last week, just wandering the hallways of the ship, which is... I guess a little bit safer that it's been neutered, uh, but still just to let a sort of triple just wander the co corridors of the ship seems a little odd as well. Uh, back on Trill, we get some more character stuff going on between Adira and Grey. They seem to be breaking up. The long distance relationship thing just isn't working out for these two. More instigated from Grey's behalf rather than Adira, but it seems like the fact that they're, you know, traveling the galaxy on a starship and one's on Trill doing other things, it just, it's, it's too hard to manage. So I think it's best they just go their separate ways. Next we see the giant cloaked bees. They live in this quarry and they've got a nesting site there where they've got some eggs and everything and this is where Janal's hidden the clue. So we get quite a, a good little action sequence there of the, our, our team being uh, chased down by these uh, very formidable creatures. They're shooting stingers at Book. He's trying to act as a bit of a decoy whilst Burnham uh, tries to unlock the puzzle piece. They're not having a great deal of luck un unlocking this piece and Book gets hit with a stinger, which uh, seems like it's quite painful, but lucky he only gets hit in the leg with it, which I think is at least something. And they can't beam out. There's deposits in the rocks, which are uh, preventing them from beaming back to the ship, but they were able to do site to site beaming you know, only minutes ago, so that kind of seemed a little unusual. And Book gets to use his Aquaman slash Doctor Doolittle uh, powers, where he, um, you know, gets the glowing forehead thing going on, where he can uh, commune with uh, with animals. It works, which is the main thing. The, the giant cloaked bees stand down. They, uh, you know, Book sends the message that we're not here to hurt you. We're not gonna. We're not gonna kill you. Don't worry. Your eggs are safe. Uh, everything's well. And it kind of turns out that Janal was tricking them the whole time. The puzzle piece wasn't hidden in the rock. They weren't there to kind of kill the bees or whatever. He was trying to give them a bit of a test to prove that they would respect life and they weren't gonna hurt the giant bees. They were gonna, you know, let, let's let them be and everything. No pun intended. He had the the puzzle piece hidden somewhere else, entirely different. Um, so yeah, it ended up being a little bit of a yeah, ethical test to see if they were going to respect life and not harm the creatures, instead keeping them safe. So I guess that was kind of, you know, a bit of a test to find out whether the pe person who's uh, who's going to get the puzzle piece is a, a, a murderer of life or a preserver of life. Back up on the ship with Stamets, he's uh, super excited because he's managed to unlock some of the uh, Romulan tricorder info and it seems that some of the uh, bits and pieces he's trying to learn or has uncovering about um, Dr. Velik's research and everything um, shows that the technology that, that they can unlock here has absolutely amazing properties and everything. Obviously it could also be used, you know, um, nefariously if it fell into the wrong hands, but I guess that's the means of all of these puzzle t tests and, and everything to make sure that the right people um, you know, are the ones that actually find the uh, the clues and, and find the technology in, in the end at the end of the the um, the treasure map. Tilly puts her foot down with uh, Rainer. He's being a jerk and and uh, and she's speaking her mind. Rainer seems to have learnt more about the crew than what you think he would have learnt, which shows that he was listening and that he does care. But Tilly also says that respect is a two way street and everybody's got to do their best to get to know each other. Little Easter egg in this scene: Tilly is drinking Sluggo Cola, the green beverage made popular on Ferengina, Ferengi soft drink. We've seen this before in DS9 and also in Star Trek. Lower decks. Saru and Tarina um, talk briefly about postponing the engagement announcement. Tarina, you know, is pretty adamant that he's not, she's not going to get pushed around by the Vulcan purists, and that they're going to do whatever hell they bloody want to do. <laughs> so stop trying to interfere with our engagement, you jerks. Conclude the Jantara ritual, and uh, Culber is returned to his body. Stamets puts together the puzzle piece. We find out that the next piece of the progenitor's puzzle is located in Zenkathi space. Now the Zenkathi uh, were a race that has been mentioned verbally a few times in previous episodes of Star Trek, but we've never really seen them on screen. They were mentioned in Paradise Lost DS9, The Adversary, By Inferno's Light, but we never saw them on screen. They were all only just mentioned in dialogue. But according to their description, they were a heavily armored lizard-like race. But one place we have seen a representation of these guys visually is in the Star Trek Online game. And this is what the Zenkathi look like, much, much larger than uh, human beings. It looks like they're like seven or eight feet tall. 
got a lot of heavy kind of body armor and so forth on with a sort of a reptilian lizard like appearance. They were also seen in a Star Trek comic book which consistently appeared the same way. Large, huge, reptilian, heavily armored. So it'll be interesting to see whether we're going to see these guys in next week's episode when they have to go into Zen Cathy space to retrieve the next puzzle piece. And in the end, after Gray's little speech there on Trill, we get to see one of the hooded uh, Trill uh, monks isn't really a Trill monk at all. It's Mole, and she's placed what I'm guessing is some kind of uh, tracking device onto Adira so that Mole and Lark are able to track the Discovery's every move and work out where they're going next to find the next piece in the puzzle. All in all, I didn't mind this episode. I think it was fine. Um, we got a bit of action and stuff down on the planet Trill and everything. We got a bit of body swapping going on with Kalba. We got uh, some uh, relationship and diplomatic stuff going on with Tarina and Saru up at Federation headquarters. Bit of a conclusion to the relationship between Adira and Grey. And a bit of speed dating uh, getting to know the crew uh, with Rainer and Tilly up on Discovery. So there was, we had a few things going on in this episode which uh, kept the pace moving along. Let me know what you guys think though. Le leave a thought in the comment section and we'll get chatting about that. Guys, if you haven't subscribed to Siphon Ace yet, please be, don't be shy to do so. Click on that big subscribe button to stay current and up to date with all the latest Star Trek news on YouTube. And be sure to check out my merch in the merch store where there is free shipping at the moment. Uh, free shipping until the 15th, I think it is, of April, where you can pick up a hoodie or a t-shirt or a mug or a cap or something uh, and get it sent out to you at no shipping cost whatsoever. On the weekend, I'm doing my first live stream for the year where we're, um, me and a usual panel of Star Trek experts talk about everything that's new in the world of Star Trek and have a bit of a chat about uh, how Discovery Season 5 is going at the moment uh, and see what everybody thinks about that. So be sure to come in along and join in with the uh, live stream this weekend. I'll be back soon with my next video. I'll see you guys soon.